There we go. And now, Okay, and share screen now. All right, so now we're recording. For the folks who aren't here, although some of the folks who aren't here, I think are gone. They seem to be accumulating drops. Okay, 10, 12. I need PowerPoint. Okay, Sylvia Plath uh, wrote her poem, Daddy. It's an uh, address to her father, uh, who she's very upset at because he died when she was young. She's also very upset because she is at this point in the grip of clinical depression, which she had suffered from off and on since she was a teenager. Um, you'll notice she only lived to be 31 years old and very shortly after she wrote this poem, she committed suicide. After some failed attempts earlier in her life. Um, and one thing that happens when you have, I've had family members with clinical depression. And uh, one thing that happens is um, you start to fixate on things that aren't the real cause of your depression. You know, doctors will tell you nowadays that what causes depression is a chemical imbalance in the brain. Um, but your mind is trying to make sense of it. And so it looks around to pick out stuff to be depressed about. And in her case, uh, on this day, it was her daddy who had uh, died when she was a little girl. Um, now, there's a term for a poem of this type where you address a person, place, or thing that's absent. Uh, this is another use of the word apostrophe. Uh, normally we mean the little sign uh, that you use in punctuation, but here it's a type of poem. Uh, I mean, the simplest is open sesame, you know, where you're telling the door to open and so you're talking to it. Um, but um, here, her, she's not addressing an inanimate object, she's addressing a long dead father. Um, Let's see what our notes have for us. No sense in reinventing the wheel. Uh, Yeah, this quarter is really flying by.
don't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Not that much. Um, all right. So, uh, class father, let's look up auto. Oh, this is new. I haven't seen this before. Um, she talks about this picture in this poem. We'll get back to uh, this in a minute. Cool. Is that cool? Um, so Otto von Ploth, or <laughs> I think I just put the von in there. Uh, Otto Ploth, is, can y'all hear me okay? I'm trying not to yell. Um, and be a bad, uh, like, roommate. Okay, so, um, So, um, Otto Ploth was a um, German who was also a scholar. He uh, studied entomology. I don't know what entomology is. I know biology majors then. Uh, entomology is a branch of biology, a branch of zoology too, where you study uh, insects. And uh, the way I remember it is, um, I changed the E to an A in my mind, entomology. So you're studying ants. Uh, it's especially important for English teachers because we study etymology, which is the source of words. Um, so it can get, get a little confusing. Uh, anyway, his specialty, specialty was not ants, it was bees. So here you've got the most harmless of creatures, a college professor who studies bees. So how do we get this Nazi screed out of Sylvia Plath? You know, what's that about? Well, uh, Otto had horrible diabetes, um, the type where your pancreas dies and you just, you know, aren't making any insulin at all. And unfortunately at this time, they have not yet synthesized uh, insulin to give as a medicine. And so all you have is diet and uh, hope for good luck. And so Otto was very sick and then he died when she was, I think 10 years old, uh, maybe eight. Um, we could look it up. Okay, he died in 1940. Oh, bumblebees and their ways. <laughs> um, now, this is like a, like, this is Jefferson County chat, so like a local county chat that I. Oops. Um, Let's see when she was born. Yeah, she was seven or eight because she was born in 1932. Okay, good. Yeah, so uh, math tells us, I think she was eight. That's what I thought I remembered. And then she rounds it up to 10 in her poetry. But then after I don't look at it for a minute, I get them 
confused, like, was it eight? Was it 10? So she's eight, which talks about being 10 when she died, I think, in another poem. Um, so um, but sometimes when something big is going on in the world, really traumatic, we will merge that in our brains with something personal. Like I remember where I was uh, when I heard about 9-11. I was actually in the mailroom of the English office. Um, so um, um, I don't know, has there been anything big like that happen in your lives? Maybe when Donald Trump got elected or, um, and there's been so much that's so big so often it's, you've, you've got this like, fire hose of uh, information coming at you these days. But uh, anyway, uh, somehow in her brain, she has spliced together her German father and uh, the Nazi war machine. And so that's what she's doing in this poem. It's a, a comparison of him to Nazis and her to the victims of Nazis. So, and it has some other stuff in there too. Uh, you do not do, you do not do any more black shoe in which I have lived like a foot for 30 years, poor and white, dare, barely daring to breathe or a shoe. So let's do a new slide. Go away. Oh my God, what is that? Okay, so first she compares herself uh, to a white foot um, and her dad is an uncomfortable black shoe, uh, which, she's, which has been kind of confining, uh, you know, it's the limits of her existence. And um, also this barely daring to breathe right shoe. You can imagine Otto before he died just, dragging himself to work, uh, trying to keep the family afloat. And he comes home and he goes to bed and it, shh, daddy doesn't feel good. Um, daddy, I have had to kill you. You died before I had time. Marble heavy, a bag full of God, ghastly statue with one gray toe, big as a Frisco seal and a head in the freakish Atlantic where it pours green, being green over blue in the waters of beautiful Nasset. Okay, so uh, that's where the enchantment comes from. That's where the spot. Let me look it up. Yes, uh, and enchantment is where you continuously um, have a long sentence in poetry over multiple lines. That could go away. God damn it. Oh, sorry. So all of this from daddy to Nosset is one sentence. Um, and so you just have line after line where you keep reading where you come to the end of it. But let's unpack this a little bit. Um, here's a statue. Now, and why is that? Because not all of these match up. She's a murderer, she killed him. Now, of course she did not. Um, but in her mind, he's the murder victim and she's the murderer. 
Uh, here's the statue. I don't know what she, how she relates to that. Uh, here's a bag full of God. And he blots out the whole country. You notice uh, that his head is in the, the Atlantic Ocean and his toe is in Frisco, which is San Francisco, which is in California. So he covers the whole country with his uh, big, huge statue body. Um, and I guess if he's the God, then she's the devotee. Um, I used to pray to recover you, ach du. Now notice this, ach du. Uh, those are German words. And all our German words are the German words that either you would learn from watching a World War II documentary, because uh, she was really small during World War II, or the words she would have picked up when she was a little girl. Um, did just a little bit of German she does know. So here's an implied um, Well, let's talk about that over here since it's not in the poem exactly. He's a German, she's American. Um, I'll never hear about the generation gap, like the gap between you and your parents. Um, is that a thing anymore? I mean, obviously it's there, uh, but for, um, you know, that was a big thing in the 60s was the generation gap. Cause you know, we kids were hip and slick and cool and the parents were squares, man. They were fedoras and suits and uh, you know, they just didn't get the kids. Um, now, unfortunately <laughs> the parents are the kids. Uh, um, yeah. So anyway, in addition to the, uh, generic generation gap. She's got also the gap between the fact that she's an American and he's German and she doesn't really get him. Um, but uh, that's not quite explicitly stated in the poem, which is why I put it over on the side. So he's the German tongue. She's the Polish town script flat by the roller of wars, wars, wars. Um, okay, so 1940 is the year her father died. It's also the year that World War II began. Um, I know what the Blitzkrieg was. It's a combination of two words. Krieg is war and Blitz is lightning. So it means lightning war. And in uh, the early fall, maybe late summer of 1940, the Polish planes were dry for months of it not raining. And suddenly Germany unleashed a kind of warfare <coughs> that has never been seen before in the history of the world, mechanized warfare, where their tanks were coming in. Um, the original purpose of the tank was to just slowly roll over a uh, trench and get you on the other side of the enemy's trenches during trench warfare. Uh, it was kind of Rommel's brainchild that I can put a bunch of these in an open field and just roll over the enemy. And the Polish army, uh, well, they came out in this glorious cavalry charge, you know, this uh, last of the 19th century cavalries, um, they're on horses. 
What happens when you put a bunch of horses up against a bunch of tanks? You get scraped flat. So the uh, war ended in like three weeks, the war for Poland. It was just devastating. And it changed the way we fight wars, um, at least as long as we keep our mechanical abilities. Um, don't lose that. Um, so um, the town she thinks she's from is gone because the Germans just scraped it flat. But the name of the town is Cope Common. My Polak friend says there are a dozen or two. So I could never tell where you put your foot, your root. I could never talk to you. The tongue stuck in my jaw. It's stuck in a barbed wire snare. Ish, 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 ish. That's I in German. But it's an ugly language, right? Um, so she's growing up speaking English. Uh, he's growing up, uh, or she hears a little German around the house, but it sounds ugly to her. I thought every German was you, which is kind of the point of the poem, right? He's every German and every bad thing every German ever did, that's his fault. And the language obscene, an engine, an engine chuffing me off like a Jew. Oh my, so here, he's the train. And she's the Jew on the train, a Jew to Dachau, Auschwitz, Belzen. I begin to talk like a Jew. I think I may well be a Jew, which it doesn't make sense for father's German, how is she Jewish, but there you go. Now, I want to show you guys, oh, I bet that was what that link was. Okay, so this is what I had tried to link to. Uh, German language compared to other European languages. Let's give it a go, shall we? Let me know if you can hear this. We're putting together a crew. I'm in. Could y'all hear that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I'll turn it back on when the... Oh, we can skip that. Hold on. Avion. Aeroplane. Aero. Avion. Flugzeug. Surprise. Surprise. Surpresa. Surpresa. Überraschung. Papillon. Butterfly. Favala. Mariposa. Schmetterling. Stilo. Pen. Pen. Plume. Kugelschreiber. Marguerite. Daisy. Margarita. Margarita. Gänseblümchen. Ambulance. Ambulance. Ambulanza. Ambulancia. Krankenwagen. Science. Science. Scienza. Scienza. Naturwissenschaften. All right. I think that's enough. So what do y'all think of German? Quite intense. <laughs> and yeah, it's got a lot of guttural. Uh, what happened to my... Yeah, it's an intense language. It's got a lot of gutturals in it. And uh, at least the way that one guy was pronouncing it it comes across quite ugly. And that's the way that Sylvia thinks of German. Uh, she's with uh, the guy that made those videos. I think that's the same guy mostly, uh, dressing up differently. Okay, so uh, the language is obscene. Uh, this don't seem right. A B S C E. Yeah, it just looked wrong. Um, 
All right, so she gets down to, I guess I better break. The Snows of the Tyrol. Oh, there were the Tyrol Mountains, where he uh, kind of dressed up like that guy that was in that uh, video when he was German, sing Edelweiss uh, and stuff. Very beautiful. Um, and also particularly a favorite place for one. Adolf Hitler. Let's see. Do we have some of the pictures of him up in the? No, oh, when Hitler showing up. Usually Hitler's so easy to find. There he goes. Uh, here's Hitler up in the Tyrol Mountains. He associated it with uh, the pure snow of the Tyrols, but also the pure blood of the Germans. And uh, she's saying, eh, it's not all that pure. Um, and she's not pure. Uh, so her dad is the snows of the Tyrol, uh, but in her, it comes out as a Jew, a gypsy. She spells that way. Um, and a tarot pack. So, uh, yeah, he's the pure, clear beer of the, the Tyrol Mountains, but in her it comes out muggy, messy. Uh, and the, uh, the Nazis have been totally eaten up with this idea of purity. It was a I mean, it's not totally different from the American South uh, at the time. In fact, uh, they looked for their model when they started making the anti-Jewish laws. They looked to the American South and found some of our laws even too harsh for what they wanted to do to uh, the Jewish people, at least early on. And in addition to taking on Jews, they also took on gypsies, um, other uh, minorities. Oh. And now she's scared of him with his Luftwaffe and his gobbledygook. Which is uh, German, right? Now the Luftwaffe, uh, she's just using it as a German sounding word. And this is the one you get from your um, documentary because it's the German Air Force. Um, and your Aryan eye bright, oh, oh, and your neat mustache and your Aryan eye bright blue. Yeah, uh, spell it right. Got these Aryan blue eyes that Hitler would have loved, um, and a mustache. Um, Panzerman, Panzerman, oh you. And so the Panzer is a German tank. So these were super awesome tanks that they built um, and used to kind of crush the enemy. Not God. So. Go back up here. Praise God. So we're saying, no, that changed my mind. Not God, but a but a swastika. Um, 
So uh, her dad, now there's no indication that her dad was a Nazi. He probably came to America to get away from all that. However, in her mind, because he's German, she's made him into a Nazi. Um, not God, but a swastika so black no sky could squeak through. Every woman adores a fascist. And uh, she just has that weakness in her heart for a fascist. Uh, the boot in the face, the brute, brute heart of a brute like you. Uh, so she's kind of seeing herself um, um, as like dating her father. Um, and, you know, the kind of woman, I mean, any guys like her, uh, you know, I guess this applies to men as well uh, in your dating choices. You have like asshole radar. You can walk into a room full of a hundred people, uh, let's say you're Sylvia Plath, there's a hundred guys in the room and one of them is an asshole and she's going to find that asshole. Uh, that's basically what she's saying. Uh, I really like those fascist men. They've got such nice uniforms. They're so polite. Um, it's not like your Confederates had trouble getting dates either. <laughs> Um, the boot in the face, the brute, brute heart of a brute like you. And here's why I got so excited. You stand in the blackboard, Daddy, in the picture I have of you, a cleft in your chin instead of your foot. Um, so here he is at the blackboard. This is the picture she would have been talking about. So that's kind of awesome. And notice he's got a little dimple in his chin, but she calls it a cleft. And uh, says that he's still a devil, uh, her father. Um, normally the cleft would be in your foot because the devil has like goat feet. Um, but no, he, uh, he, he has the cleft in his chin. Oh, so here we go, devil. So he's a panzer man, he's a swastika, he's a fascist, he's a devil, he's God. Uh, she's just piling it on, right? No less a devil for that. No, not any less the black man who bit my pretty red heart in two. So she's angry at him for dying and she hasn't moved on. I was 10 when they buried you. At 20, I tried to die. Okay, so he died. Um, at 20 is a suicide attempt when she's 20 years old-ish. Um, she's lying about her 10-year-old uh, age. I'm not so sure that she's... Uh, you know, she's just rounding it off to 10, but she might have been 10. Um, at 20, I tried to die and get back, back, back to you. I thought even the bones would do. But they pulled me out of the sack and stuck me together with glue, and then I knew what to do. I made a model of you. A man in black with a mind cup look. and the love of the wreck and the screw. And I said, I do, I do. So what did she do when she was 20-ish? What's this man in black who's a model of her dad? She got married? Yeah. So again, that kind of Electra complex where she wants to marry her father, but her father's dead. So I found me a guy that reminds me of dad. 
was it Ted Hughes? I don't know. Oh, there they are. Um, oh, with a baby. That'll fix things. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, I, I can kind of see, where's uh, Otto? So there's Otto, there's Ted. I mean, they aren't totally unlike so uh, in looks, but then she also says he's got this. And as far as we can tell, like, Ted never would go in after she died, never go into uh, their relationship. Uh, but mostly it seems like typical stuff. He had an affair or multiple affairs uh, and they wound up getting a divorce. Um, So, Daddy, I'm finally through the black telephones off at the room. Um, so here is your traditional black telephone. Don't we have pictures here? Images. Oh. Here we go. All right. So when I was a kid, crap, I don't know what's going on. This is what a telephone looked like. Um, it was black, it had a cord, it had another cord to the wall, and it was wired to the wall. So if you've got a landline today, you know, you can clip the little clipper. No, none of that. Uh, it was hardwired into the wall. So if you wanted it off the wall, you had to pull this big, thick cord. And it's something you did when you were going nuts. Um, get the telephone, uh, you know, disconnected. It was, it was quite a chore. The black telephones off at the root. And notice the repetition of black in this to associate with their father. And the voices just can't worm through. If I've killed one man, I've killed two. The vampire, okay, here we go, vampire. He was you and drank my blood for your seven years, if you want to know. So they were married seven years. Um, Daddy, you can lie back now. There's a stake in your fat black heart and the villagers never liked you. Um, they're dancing and stamping on you. They always knew it was you. Daddy, daddy, you bastard, I'm through. Uh, usually when the father has abandoned the child, it's the child who is called the bastard. Um, which seems unfair. <laughs> now, at first, she was the victim of the vampire, but no more. She has gotten in touch with her power. Now, um, I guess she's if she were living 30 years later, she would say she was Buffy. She's, she's killed the vampire, right? Ah, oh, but Buffy the Vampire Killer. Slayer, Slayer, what am I thinking? Uh, okay, so that's the poem. Uh, now if you want to write about it, how do you do that? And this type of poem really um, allows for you to write the comparison. Uh, comparison and contrast, uh, because that's what she's doing throughout the poem. She's comparing herself to her father. So I am this, my father is that. I am this, my father is that. And so you could do with German. 
This is American. A Nazi versus the impure people that Nazis didn't like. Um, so somehow she's um, degenerated from her. And that was one of the things that Nazis were wor worried about was uh, uh, Germans intermarrying with people from other backgrounds and diluting German blood. And it's a big part of America's uh, racial history. And uh, even our current kind of uh, Nazis talk about white genocide. And uh, when we talk about the genocide of Jewish people, we mean rounding them up, putting them in a camp and killing them. When we talk about, when they talk about white genocide, uh, they're talking about um, having sex with people who aren't white and having uh, mixed race babies. And that's going to be the genocide of the uh, white race, which is a totally different kind of genocide, right? Um, so you can have a, a first fighting that way, uh, impure and the people uh, they were and the losers in the war, at least the early war, like Poland. I think it's maybe Poland. We could do Poland. Um. Monsters like vampires and uh, well, I guess that's the main one, vampire. So there's a bit about that, and uh, she's either the victim or the slayer herself. And at the time, it was the woman's job to be. Uh, terrorized by the vampire, and then there would be some dude to show up to uh, kill the vampire. So uh, it's unusual for her to put herself in the role of the slayer. Uh, it'll be another 30 years before, you know, the Buffy verse comes along. And, uh, and the idea of women being strong enough to fight them, I mean, there was always Wonder Woman, but she was kind of demigod, right? Uh, anyway, um, that would give you an outline. Also, I noticed in my notes, uh, boy, you get a lot of windows fast, don't you? Here we go. Uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross was a psychologist who came up with the idea that there are five stages of grief. And I just last week saw a somebody proposing something for a new stage of grief. I can't remember what it was. Um, so it's not set in stone, but it's you know popular. Now the thing to notice is that um, these stages intermingle. So you go and begin at stage one, then you go to stage two, but then you, you know, you're back in stage where you wake up and you can't believe the person's gone. Uh, then you work on bargaining a while and then you're angry again. And But overall, you're supposed to be gradually moving through these stages so that at the end of a year or two, yeah, you're sad that they're gone, but you've integrated that loss into your life and you're moving on. And, um, you're not sad all the time. So you could write about the stages of grief in your essay and cite, since we're looking for quotations. Um, oh, we need, um, can you read that on it? So where in this poem is she in denial about the death of her father? Let's 
look at the beginning. And this goes through the whole thing. I want that highlight. That's annoying. That's really annoying. Um, her father's been dead for 20 years, 22 years, uh, and she's acting like he's still alive. You do not do, you do not do. She's talking to her father, daddy, I have to kill you. So just all these quotes that you can work in that I would like to be able to highlight. Let's find another copy of this. No, that's the one, of course. Let's try this one. All right, so here she's talking to him. Daddy, I have had to kill you. I used to pray to recover you. So all these places that she's talking to her father as though he were still alive. Although still knowing he's dead, right? It's weird. Um, is there any anger in this poem? What do y'all think? So much anger. Yeah, right. I mean, it's overwhelming. You just have to cut it down to a few quotes. And he's calling her dead, dead father a Nazi. Uh, he's obscene. He's a death count uh, train. Um, so all of this, you know, just he's a vampire. You know, he's just he bit her pretty red heart in two, it's just so angry. It's just radiating off of her. Okay, so there's lots of stuff to quote from there. Depression, I mean, it's all a poem of depression, but there's some special moments like she tried, well, that's later. Oh, no, 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 no. That's no. Bargaining is when you, try to recover the uh, lost person. And uh, she tried to get back to him. At 20, so uh, it's like David said in the Bible about his dead child, um, I can go to him, he cannot come to me. Um, so if she can't get her dad back, she can at least go to be with him. Uh, I thought even the bones would do. So this is bargain, classic bargaining. Also, another way to get your father back is to marry you a man who reminds you of daddy. So uh, these are her uh, two attempts in the poem to bargain. Of course, uh, now we get to depression. And so she's depressed over her father's death. Um, doesn't quite know how to deal with it. Um, and, and the whole thing is about depression, right? But there's parts in it, like the bit my pretty red heart in two. She's not only angry, she's sad. Um, it's like um, she's you know, underneath the anger is sorrow, but she, she's not comfortable dealing with her sadness. So she, she lets it come out as anger. Because, you know, it's no fun to say, I've just been really, really sad, really sad. Other people do do poems like that. But this is not that kind of poem. It's coming out sideways as anger. But there's some points in here where the depression peeks through. And acceptance, I mean, there's the formal line at the end, daddy, daddy, you bastard, I'm through, but clearly she hasn't worked through her issues. Uh, once she's worked through her issues, if she survived, I mean, they didn't have the kind of 
medicine we have for depressed people now, all they had basically was electroshock therapy. And they left those machines turned way up. It just wiped your mind. So um, it wasn't a very good alternative. Um, so, right. She doesn't ever really get too much in the way of acceptance, although she says she is through, but she stopped writing the poem. We, we figure she continued being angry. All right, any questions about if you want to write about this poem? We have other poems you can write about. Okay, I am going to stop the recording and divide us up into our groups. Uh, does anybody need to see me right away? Like um, you're stuck? Group nine. Group nine, okay, I'll start with group nine. Write that down. Anybody else stuck? All right, well, give me a holler if I uh, get to needing something, and I will. Oh, I think what I will do how many groups do we have in this class? Nine, nine total. All right, so I'm going to set up nine breakout rooms, but I will let you choose which room. And if you have trouble getting in it, I can put you in manually myself, but that way you can get in your rooms quicker. All right, so here come the rooms and I'm opening them up so you can get into, you know, if you're in group one, go into group, uh, room one. If you're in group two, go into room two and so forth. All right, I think you can join now, and if you can't, let me know, and I'll manually put you in your group. I can't. All right, who is that? Georgia. Uh, let's, oh, Caraway. Okay, Caraway, you are in. I'm in the wrong class. Group one. Group one, okay, thanks. Okay, assign to room one. There you go. Let's see if you can get in there now. Anybody else stuck? Uh, I am. Taylor, let's see. Group nine, all right. And Ella for group nine. And okay. Matt. Group nine, Taylor. Uh, Williams. And anybody else? Travis. Travis. So you need a group nine too, huh? Yes. All righty. Should be able to do it. Anybody else stuck? I am. I'm in group eight. All right, Strickland. Is that who's talking to me? Yes, sir. All right. Try it now. Okay, Daniel two. Uh, Shanklin eight. Hamilton three. Uh, Massey, five. Uh, Murphy, six. Eight. 
and Edwards to. Okay, I think I put everybody that want you know into your rooms, and I'm going to group nine. What up? What up? Uh, I still need to get the Dropbox figured out. <laughs> okay, can you share your screen? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Can y'all see? It's coming. Uh, I remember this. Sitka. Is that a company? It's yes, sir. It's a uh, clothing brand. It's a what brand? It's a clothing brand. Oh, clothing. Okay. I guess they only let cool people use their clothing. That's why I hadn't heard of it. <laughs> well, it's a uh, more of a like hunting brand. Oh well, there, there you go. <laughs> I'm totally lost in the woods. I'm like, why would I get up early in the middle of the night when I could be sleeping? All right. So open your Dropbox. Let's see what's up with it. Should be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I meant that one on the left there. Yeah. Oh my God, come on. Is it not working or? I don't know. Try going into your Explorer. Not that one, the uh, uh, File Explorer. See uh, the file, there's a circle. There's a, I don't down here? Know is. Yeah. Okay, open that up. Okay, click into Dropbox. Over here? Yes. Okay, so you don't have your files yet. So now go to dropbox.com on a browser. All right, click over on shared on the left. Oh, you need to verify your email. So we see up at the top where it says click here to send a verification. All right, now go to your email in another window. Don't close this one out. We're going to have to come back to it. Well, I'm trying to move this. Do I have to do that? <sighs> now you sure you use uh, Gmail when you've sent the email? I got oh, well, I got Sir? Go up to search and search for a Dropbox. Up here? Not there, the next one, the one by Gmail. It's a search mail and chat. You might have to go through like the webmail thing. Oh, that would be annoying. What did you use for your email? Go up to the CT at the top right. Okay, RCT024. Yeah, you'll need to go to your webmail because that's latte.edu. So go to. <laughs> I think I'll do that. I don't ever do it. Does one of y'all know how to get into the, the webmail at Tech? Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, All right, just open a new browser window. Type in. Uh, Tech email, La Tech email, just L A T E C H. The webmail? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. 
Yeah, yeah, horde. It's very annoying. All right, now use your, same as uh, when you're using Moodle, I think. Oh, it says uh, don't use your email address. Um, just use your username. Log in with your new username in lowercase. This stuff's so legacy. Uh, they decided to, I think that's why they decided to go with Gmail because nobody can. How do you log into uh, Moodle? What's your e password there? Well, I'll be done. That's it. Crap. All right, let's try uh, Gmail again because it's supposed to forward it. Just click on that other tab. Uh, okay, do the search mail and chat there. Type in Dropbox. There you go. Click on that, that Dropbox, the top one. The first one? Yeah. OK, that didn't do anything. All right, go back to the one I sent you. Let's try it. That second one, seems like we did this before. Okay, click on that. Okay, go to folder, but maybe that'll work. <laughs> okay, add to Dropbox, there we go. All right, now let's check our, uh, yeah, do view. Let's see what happens when you click on that. So what do you like to hunt? Uh, well, I guess a little bit of everything. So deer, ducks, uh, turkey? Uh, yeah. Actually, we, we just lost our ranch in West Texas. Uh, they sold it. Oh, but we man. hunt, we duck hunt down south, so. Right, right. Do a lot of that on the weekends. I don't think it's working. All right, just lower that. Let's not, uh, minimize your screen. We'll just check it directly. Okay, there it is, 102. Click into that. <laughs> Excuse me. Text. Six. 102. Okay, good. Now i uh, go up to view at the very top. Keep going. Okay, click on list instead of details. And then click on file name extensions. It's a checkbox over to the right of the screen. There we go. Good. So you got a dog? Yeah, I do. <clears throat> like a lab? No, I have a Boykin Spaniel. Hmm. Are they good for it? Uh, well, they're not as big as a lab, but right. yeah, I mean, they're little small dogs. <clears throat> but they, they, they'll retrieve the ducks for you? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's open up uh, Forche, the HTML one, <laughs> and see what we're dealing with. I think y'all were just um, putting in special characters and proofreading, right? Yeah, we were coding or something. It was. Yeah. So you're ready to roll now. Uh, are there other group people here? 
I think was yeah. it which one of you was working on it with me before? What were we doing? Um, both of us were working on it and we did the coding with special characters. Okay. So have you finished special characters or are you still working on those? I think we're still working on them. Let's take a look. Okay, go back in your um in your um make this half of your desktop so it's not covering the whole thing. You see by the X at the top, there you go. Yeah, just squeeze it in. All right, good. Now let's open the uh, PDF for the other side. Uh, yeah, the top one. And what page are you guys on? Or do you know that yet? I, I'm, I honestly do not know. <laughs> so we haven't really started with the PDF yet. You're still doing the special characters. Yes, sir. All right, so see what it says, uh, the HTML file for Shay, uh, right click on it this time. And open with, uh, I don't see it. Try it again, I think we, the next one down, there you go. And move your cursor over so it's over the file. There you go, try that, right click. The open with, there it is. This time it's halfway down the uh, gray screen. There we go. Open with, uh, choose another app. It's a choice at the bottom. Go down, there you go. Okay, more apps again. Go, go to the bottom, there you go. Awesome. And this time look for WordPad. It's, oh, there it is. All right, let's scroll down to the text. This is uh, code at the beginning, but you have your uh, special characters here and also uh, there's a picture of them. Right here? Yeah. So when you need us, but if you come across a new one, just let me know and I can uh, give it to you. Those are mostly what you use in French, but they're by no means all. Okay, so let's go on down to the text. Keep going, it's about line 100. All right, stop. All right, we just look through, okay. Um, See, one, two, three, four, four lines down in the third word in, M-E-M-E, -E, meme. Mm -hmm. So highlight the E with the little thing over it, just the E. Okay, there you go, copy that. Okay, go up to replace. And it should pop up there, yeah. And now we have to code in the character because uh, otherwise it'll blow up down the road. So to go down to replace with, okay, type in an ampersand. That's what? <laughs> Shift seven, it means and. Shift seven? Yeah, see that's the little and mark. Oh, okay, I got you. They call that an ampersand, anyway. Um, e C I R C, which is short, short for circumflex semicolon. Is that a colon or a semicolon? Okay, that yeah. Okay, now replace all. All right, good. Um, an X out of that. Well, see if you can scroll while that's there but move it so we can see what the text is. I'm looking for special characters we hadn't gotten to yet. There we go. Uh, I don't see Do any close this backdrop? I don't even see a backdrop. <laughs> oh, that thing, you can lower it. We might need it again in a minute. All right, you may be close to finish. I don't, uh, go down on the, a little more. Let's see if there are any because all I'm seeing is code. I'm not seeing special characters. Oh, droll. Um, just a little lower than you are and to the left. 
to the right. Keep going to the right. Qui Ben Droll. Right, the G R O L E. Mm -hmm. Okay, highlight the O. That's another circumflex. They're not as common as the acutes and the graves. That's when we have it. All right, and replace. Yeah, copy. Um, paste it. There you go. Okay, and change the E to an O. That's all you need to change in that code. There we go. Okay, replace all. Ha, good. All right, go down a little more. Let's see if there's anything else. Now we should be through with the special characters mostly because this is the English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is it. I think so. So I think we're done with the special characters. So let's work on editing it. Um, go back up to the about line 100. It's where the text starts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, that's where the English starts. Let's go on up to the uh, Creole. Oh, wait, 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 go back down. I saw one just a little bit. Keep going. There. Um, C Z I E M E Z. Right here. Yeah, I like the E. Uh. Oh, fuck. Uh. <laughs> Where did it go? I think it was this, this one. That's the same letter. Il con and E. Uh, it's uh, E H A N G. I like that E. Where's it at? It's right below where you are. And to oh, the, I see it. Yeah, I like that. All right, good copy. Go up there and paste it. It's called an E grave or grave. So, uh, Keep the ampersand, but the rest of it will need to change. Okay, uh, E, grave, G-R-A-V-E, semicolon. Okay, and replace all. Did it do it? I think so. It did right here. Oh, good, good, good. All right. And that other letter was an e-grav too, so it should have caught it. All right, let's start scrolling back up. <laughs> oh, are you from Ruston? Yes, I am. We moved in 1964 when I was six years old, and I've mostly been in Ruston ever since. All right, scroll down. Although currently I'm in uh, Metairie with family, so ha, near to New Orleans. Gotcha. gotcha. But I'm, you know, I have to come back periodically to remind tech that I like, said so once we're through with the COVID, I guess I'll be back in Rustin full time. All right, scroll down about a hundred lines to uh, the text. We're almost there. There. Okay, so make that screen smaller. We want to be able to read other stuff while we type. So just squeeze it in. Yeah, there you go, and move. Well, I guess it's good. And you can X out of the find and replace box now. Let's go up to view. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. View. Uh, yeah, let's see. Click on word wrap. It's gonna pull down, wrap to window. There we go. Now it all fits so you don't have to scroll left and right. All right, go over in that PDF and let's figure out where we are. Compare Truo et Jean Malin, or however you say that. I'm terrible with French. Okay, so start scrolling down to the table of contents. 
1895, LC4 Shea. Keep going, we're not quite to the table of contents yet. There. All right, let's go back up and find the page number. Uh, oh, there it is. And I can't see it because of this little box. Compared to, we need to be on page seven in the uh, actual body of it. So keep going down. See, we're already at 11, and I don't think we've even started yet. So you'll have to look at the page number in there. There you go. X, keep going. XI. It'll get to one, I think, in a minute. There must be stuff on this page. Uh, some of them are blank. Two, four. I think this was five. There it is. That's six. It just passed it. I think. Go down to seven, maybe. Oh, Here. there it was. There it was. <coughs> go back. Go back up a little. I think it may start on six. I, I don't know. There it is. Yeah. All right. So uh, put your browser on the other side over the editor, and then we can compare it. And then when you see a, something, you can change it in the editor. But um, we need to. Ha oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'll go back to your folder for a sec. It's right behind. See that Dropbox behind, uh, there we go. All right, click into folk tales. Mm -hmm. Texts. 102 folk tales. All right, now open the middle file in your browser this time. The PDF or the? The uh, HTML. Now you'll need to pull that window over to the left while you leave the PDF on the right. So just pull that tab and tell it not to translate. But we pulled the whole window. We need to just pull the tab over. See, you've got a little, um, hmm, how can we do this? Um, see the tab at the top where it says uh, PDF and then an X? Yeah, pull the PDF over to the right. Oh, shit. Try not to X it out. Make your window wider for a second. It'll give you a little more. Okay, now pull that PDF tab to the right. Just the tab, not the rest of it. Yeah, there you go. Did it work? I think so. Ah, good. Yeah. So we split the window. All right, now I'll squeeze in your PDF so that it, you don't have all that gray space. See how the gray around it? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, now we can look at them side by side. So move your um, HTML so it's right beside it and pull it up so you're just looking left and right. Like quand and quand should be about at the same level. There you go, good. All right, now just, and this is tricky because it's another language, but just look for spelling. Uh, let me type, uh, Conan. Okay, so first sentence is all right. Uh, let's look at the second sentence. Li mande madame la pu prandly. Not bad. Kame madame la u que que. Et un joli petit garçon, et l'été, il a beaucoup l'esprit, les mandes, jean malinqui, l'âge, 
Okay, um, I see our first mistake. So see Jean Malinqui Lodge, that's just a regular A. I guess it's La Age. Uh, and over on the left, it's got the um, circumflex accent over the A. So we need to just go in and change that to a regular A. So go back to your editor. It's on another, it's uh, behind. Do you see that little A by the circle with the question mark in it toward the bottom right? That's your editor. So you can just cl click on that down at your uh, task bar at the bottom of your screen. There. All right, so let's find Lodge. Lodge. Uh, Is all this nonsense? Um, okay, it should be right about there. Oh, here we go. Uh, Jean Malinqui, it's uh, up a bit and to the right. Keep going to the right. Just delete that A and put in a regular. A. Here? Yeah because that's not supposed to be a special character. Just delete it? Yeah. Because the rest of them are probably needed. Okay, save that. All right, go back in your browser, uh, the brown text. Yeah, click there. All right, reload. And not translate. because it's not really, I mean, it's kind of French. Okay, see, age got fixed. Can you see it? Is it? Qui la age le te gaga. Do you see that, that line? Go up a little bit to the left and down. And to the left. There it is. I see, I see, I see, I see. So you just fix that. Ah, uh, Jean Malin, Tepa, Kibem, D, Le, Just, Maisley, Respond, Madame, La, Que, Le, Te, Tende. Um, Williams and Travis, do you see what we're doing? Yes, sir. So you were just proofreading. Oh, 10 day. There's another one. So um, where's your cursor? I don't see it anymore. Okay, there, that's it. That T-E, N-D-E, the last D should have an acute accent over it. So let's go back to your editor. All right, scroll down just a tad. If I'm not seeing it very well, huh. uh, and we can just do a search for it. Uh, go up to where I search it. Uh, do a Control F. Okay, type in T E N D E. That's faster than. Oh, there it is. All right, now highlight that, or you don't have to do it, just X out of that, yeah. All right, before the E, put an ampersand. The second E, not the first one. See, it's the first E is regular, the second one has an acute accent. You said before? Yeah, that one, okay, yeah, ampersand. Go after the E now, and put the uh, word acute. That's an acute accent, because it points top right to bottom left and the semicolon at the end. All right, save it. All right, let's go reload that page and see if it worked. Uh, and now I've lost it. No, there it is. Oh, yes, you fixed it. Excellent. Uh, so, Momon de Kame Sali.
wait, let's not go too far. We're just at the edge of it. Kamasali Atene Kwan Persh. Um, oh, so it's coded wrong for uh, P E C H E R S purchase. <laughs> so let's go find that in the uh, in the editor. It should be an acute rather than a circumflex. Um, so do another. Where is that word? All right, do a find. P, or let's just do quand because it doesn't have any special characters in it. And then a space and then a P. That should find it for us we, if we're lucky. Ah, there it is. Okay, so go to that second line where it says circ and change the CIRC to acute, A-C-U-T-E. And if I'm not with you, that's all at the chart at the top. Good, all right, save it. All right, reload. Uh, where'd it go? Right here. Oh, and it fixed it, good. And flare main, oh, and the, E in May meme for you an acute. So let's go back to the and it should be right close to where we are. Oh yes, it's at the end of that line. So see circ change that to acute. Some of this stuff got misread when they uh, ran it through the computer. All right, good. Save it. Okay, go reload. Uh, and sometimes meme does have an acute, I um, mean, a circumflex. I mean, yeah. What about this one down here? What's that? Uh, I don't know. I have to get to it because, uh, like I say, sometimes it has the circumflex. They may be different words for all I know, uh, not being a French guy. Okay, where was that? Right here. Where was it on the right? I've lost our spot on the uh, PDF. Um, here we go. Yeah, Mame, Lani. Right oh, Lani. See how it has Tani on your, uh, on your uh, browser? The word after meme. It's T-A-N-N-E-E. -E. Yeah. See that? All right, we need to fix that. I didn't think that looked familiar. Okay. Uh, I mean, even less familiar than usual. Is this okay. it right here? Yeah, delete the T. And you need a L, L and then an ampersand R S Q U O, which is right single quote. R S Q U O, yeah, right single quote, semicolon. Yeah, I think the rest is right. So go ahead and save that and let's reload. Yeah. Ah, yes, Lani, that means the year. I know a little French. Que la neige te tombe. Okay, the C uh, the, in a uh, safe at the end of the, that line yeah. should be capitalized, yeah. So we'll find a special character and just capitalize it, uh, the C in it, not the rest. The rest has to stay lowercase. So uh, go up a little to the right, to the left. Yeah, that's C-C-E-D-I-L. That first C should be capitalized. That's the only difference when you have a lowercase special character and uppercase. All right, go reload it. Ah, good. C'est fait, madame. Ah, la prendre dans so belle carrosse et mignonne dans so maison, pour faire so commissant. 
So the uh, tab. All right, now we need to scroll down to page eight to finish that up. What they have is a, when they printed it was English on the left and I mean, uh, uh, Creole on the left and then English on the right. So you have to go to the next page. There you go, T. T. la, and that's where you finish your paragraph. Prenne la main, madame, autarque. Okay, that quay needs an E acute in it. So let's go find that. Uh, and I moved all this together. Um, so T, see it still, I had I joined the two paragraphs. Uh, what I did was put all of the Creole first and then all of the English second. Uh, Okay, quay is there only a second line that you can see, Q-U-E. So go before the E. Click uh, right before the E, not before the Q. Move your cursor. Right before the e. Now ampersand, go after the E and that's an acute semicolon. Good, save it. Reload. Quay. Okay, good. So, different moment. It, oh, it does change. The meme, it changes from a circumflex to a, a Q. Mostly nowadays in real French, you see it as a Q. I mean, as a circumflex. So, I guess that's why they kept making that same mistake. Um. It's still in that first paragraph somewhere. I'm not seeing it. Oh, 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 second line, second word. Oh, here. Change the circ to an acute. Leave the rest the same. Great. Okay, let's go save it and go back. And we're almost done with that paragraph. I think we'll call it quits. Le uh, te. Jalo and Mishi Rish Quite Winnie. Oh, I'm doing Latin, gosh. Le Ju Pu Mare Avet Madame La. Okay, your first paragraph is done. So, um, y'all got any questions? You said our next uh, essay thing was do Halloween? I don't know. Let's go to the. Uh, Hold on. I'll share my screen. I'm gonna look it up. Uh, 102. Syllabus. Yeah, right. Uh, looks like right before Halloween, so trick or treat. <laughs> and then the research paper is the week after that, so you need to go ahead and work on it. Anything else? Don't want to keep you all late. <clears throat> no, sir. All right, let me know if you need any help. Um, but I think you kind of got it now, if you just keep doing what you're doing. Yes, sir. Um, and sure. the English will be a lot easier, but you'll need to put in curly quotes. So let me know if it gets stuck on those. All right. See you guys next time. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome.